So this is my intro to a series of papier-mâché dishes and bowls and plates that I'm going to make with you. This is very lightweight and I'm making it like that so that I can just have it resting on a table and I can put things in as I come in from a walk, maybe just chuck them on there, fur cones, seashells, bits of odd shaped rocks and things that I can then use later on for all sorts of things, who knows where the mine goes. And also these things which are much the same but actually have the purpose of being a tray. So this is incredibly hard actually. And also the sides. And it's a rough pulp and it's made of cardboard around the edge. So what I try and do is use as many fan materials as I possibly can. Then I paint them with gesso. Number two, there are no no ends actually. There are no in, there are only infinite numbers, if you know what I mean. We can just keep going. Another tray has yet to be decorated. I've got all these to this stage so that I've got a lot which I can then rapidly go ahead and, and do on every week or twice a week or three times a week of decoration. And there are loads of wonderful ideas for decorating. At the moment, I'm quite immersed in Persian art and trying to create that around a bowl all those beautiful hills and landscapes and golden backgrounds. Also medieval kind of Greek Orthodox art as well. Fantastic images there. Another tray, this one quite big so that you can actually use it for bringing in your hot chocolate and coffee and croissant and things. Then there's a series of quite rough bowls as well. These are only a few of them to show you. You see, they can have all sorts of aspects. I let things go the way they want to go, so that when you actually look at that, you'll see it's an indentation. So on the back, what I will probably do, as I work with resin when I make jewellery, is take this imagery here, because I'm looking at ancient places of habitation on Dartmoor, sort of prehistoric cultures, and I want to create this into maybe a little sacred area, but it's underneath the plate, so you won't see it. And then paint into the indentation where it's concave and then smooth the surface off with clear resin. You won't really see it, but if you do pick it up, there's a beautiful surprise. And then the top can be, well, the imagination can go in so many ways. This one, another variation on the same, where I've made a little plate just with paper and then until it's fairly hard and then I've pressed in pulp so it's a, a mixture often of layering and forming out of cardboard and pulp and the pulps can be made from many different things and then that brought me on to this which I'm just beginning to paint up when I make plates and things, if they do happen to stick on anything tarry or stony or woody or discoloration, I allow it to become part of the form. And this little white area here is just to remind me that I probably will write in a circle what the inspiration is. This is, at the moment, it's heading towards... On Dartmoor, there are many places where, as I say, ancient, civil, ancient cultures lived, ancient people lived, and the remains are all there of their habitation and their sacred ceremonial sites and their burial mounds. And this is going to head in that direction. So I stop painting there because that is the entrance to the sacred circle. I have many ideas. Then I also have this kind of loads of things which people may have seen on previous ones are called treasure trove. Now treasure trove began its life. I haven't decided yet whether it's going to be China or it's going to be somewhere on the Silk Road or it's going to be Venice. Venice seems like a good place to do it. And I think possibly on one of the islands, there's going to be a family who makes beaten silver and golden plates 
and they also have a next door neighbour who's a ceramicist who works in porcelain. And they have made these beautiful plates which are going off to be exported around the world. And they head off from the harbour in Venice. And after a few days, they hit a storm. Disaster strikes, the boat breaks up, and all these beautiful artifacts just drift down to the bottom of the sea. And over many centuries, sand and deposits and stones gather and barnacles come. This is little tiny barnacles, my impression of barnacles. And I have painted the bottom bit here with a white oil paint and I've painted this with gesso. This will become more like barnacles and this will be like a little rock pool. But it's just one take on a myriad of different interpretations of that journey and the story to be written about it. In fact, wouldn't it be lovely if you all took this idea right at the beginning, you can choose your origi origin, whether it be the Silk Road or actually Venice or possibly Florence or somewhere like that. Imagine the family and imagine the journey and then imagine them being found. And I happen to find this one on a seashore on the Channel Islands for example, near that wonderful place called the Beady Pool. So that's one treasure trove one. I also make lots of bowls. These are very rough and free-formed out of pulp and gesso. I like them just like that. I like things to just arrive as they naturally are without being forced into any sort of artificial way. But I also do some bowls and plates and things which are really fine and I make them with handmade watercolour paper and uh, I make gesso, very fine gesso, and then gild them with gold and silver leaf. We can do those too. I'm also very unconventional in very many ways, and this is one of those sort of bowls. It, I found this piece of plastic which has got fiberglass inside it. It was the bottom of a great big huge sign advertising a farmer's market and it had got algae underneath it and I just love the landscapey effect of the algae on this black tar fiberglass paper and so I took it home and washed it and then thought I could make it into the rim of a papier mache bowl and I used pulp which I found on a walk at a lovely little village called Lustley on Dartmoor there's a place called Lusty Cleave because it's very hilly and valley and lots of streams and trees. Beautiful. It used to be an arts and crafts destination many years ago for people who kind of came out intrepid explorers on holiday and weekend, the dilettantes of the art world. And also it's become a sort of refuge for artisans as well. And somebody must have been there because there was this great big pile of shavings and slivers or what I imagine was hazel wood, had been cut with an adze and it lay there in a great big mound surrounded by lots of Jacob's sheep. It was very beautiful, very peaceful. Oh, it was so nice, especially the smell of the sheep because I'm also a spinner, so I love that whole thing. And I gathered up some of these very rough pieces because I thought, you know, I can embed those. There you go, a little piece. And then, I'm just painting over with gesso here and there. This reminds me of a very, very strange fungi that grows on Dartmoor. But that's as far as the imagination went. And then it stopped. It's no longer a fungi. It's become the rim of a bowl. Perhaps it might have some reference to prehistoric sites on Dartmoor. It's a journey of the imagination and you never know where it's going to go. And the secret is, to take yourself off on artists' walks, just mooch about wherever you are, if you can. If you can't, if you're housebound for any reason, do it through books, do it through your imagination, do it through Mr. Google and see where it takes you. Surf the net. I go out in my little old Fiat Fabia car which is called a Devon car because it's the kind of car that if you meet a very posh SUV from London, you can just dive into the hedge because they will not scratch their cars. And I don't blame them because they're very beautiful. Mine isn't particularly beautiful, but my goodness, it's old and reliable and I love it. 
and I take off onto Dartmoor, park up somewhere and mooch about and take photographs, forage, gather things, sit in the peace. Up on Dartmoor you can just sit down and it's like you can have a blood transfusion of the soul if you're at all stressed. You just go up there for half an hour and you feel reborn. It's a magical place and I'm very devoted to it. So I live here in Devon, right on the edge of Dartmoor. I have my studio here, closer down to the Woods of Sea. I spend a lot of time in my studio. And I have a studio for painting, one for making jewellery and an area for doing papier-mâché. And my next area for filming because I need clear light. I think natural light is probably the best way. And I don't care about getting old. I like the look of old and evolving kind of knackered things really. So I'm now in that camp. I've been doing this for 37 years and I've loved every minute, which for me is a huge surprise because I am one of those people who will not travel twice on the same road. I always have to look for a different way so I can find new things. But I wake up every morning really excited to get on with this and I really love doing it. And I think that during the winter, wherever the winter happens to find you, we're just in it now, here, January, nearly January, end of December 2022. And I want to share this with you. Some of you will really love it. Some of you won't. And often lots of you will have friends who will. So let's see where it takes us. I've also got jewellery, of course, which um, that's my main bread and butter. So I'd like to show you that as well. Next video. Toodle pip.